All right, DVW fam, we got a very exciting episode for you guys today. We are currently in Madrid, Spain with the homie Alex here, and he's all about his craft beer, but that's what I've been learning since I've been in the city. There's a growing culture and scene of craft beer here. There's been craft beer bars popping up all over the city, also as well as like traditional um, Spanish beer. So yeah, we're in this place right now called Brew Route. Wow, Pizza Bar, their pizza bar, but a uh, main part of their bar is this craft beers, and we also got about six other craft beers we're gonna try later, but they have a good selection here. So in this video, we're gonna ch check out the beer, drink, and craft beer scene of Madrid. Yeah. And try a little bit of all their craft beers. Most of them. <laughs> Alright guys, so we stumbled upon this little liquor store in the center of Madrid right now. It's called Masque Cervezas. Alex here said I had to try some of Madrid and Spanish beer, liquor, yeah, totally. wine. So uh, the store has a little bit of everything. And I'm understanding that craft beer is a growing industry in Madrid. Uh, a lot of people have been inviting me to try the beer here. So yeah. we're gonna grab some uh, goodies and we're gonna taste a little bit of um, Madrid's uh, drink scene. Yeah, and this place in Spanish is called More Than Beer and they have <laughs> More than beer here, but uh, that's their specialty. But they have everything up to like wine, um, whiskey, hard alcohol. They they also have like American stuff and all that too. But we're in Europe, we're in Spain, so we're gonna try the local stuff. Hey, so we got Hardikovo here. He's a uh, one of the shop owners here. He says like Jacob, but the Spanish version, right? Yeah, it's, it's Jacobo, but Jacobo. Like, you know, it's not it's not for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> but um, so you seem like a craft beer expert here. What would be your favorite go-to beer? We're gonna get that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll go as in more than beer uh, breweries. So we have like our own favorite breweries and like oh, the okay. ones that because there's like quite limited editions that they keep on doing. So you cannot really stick to one beer. You stick to the brewery itself. Oh, okay. And, like you know, some out of my favorites will be like from Basqueland, from the Basque Country, oh, yeah. or Soma from Barcelona. And here from Madrid, it's like a relatively small one, but I really love it. It's called Oso. Oso. So they have like a bar here like in the center of Madrid called La Osita is really nice. So we got more than we bargained for, asked for his favorite beer, now we have favorite brewery so maybe we'll grab a, a brew from there. I think one interesting thing about beers in Spain is, is, is that we have a really quality and several types of barrels. So you can get your beer and put it in Oloroso Barrel, in Pedro Jimenez, uh, some of the whiskey companies uh, use Spanish barrels so why not do the same with beer? Yeah, like you, uh, you use uh, barrels that were uh, used for wines, yeah. and then you, when, when you finish your beer, you put it in a in a wine barrel oh. and let it sit for months. All right, so we got our uh, Spanish beer hall right here. Yeah. That's good. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. There, there is one interesting fact that uh, this is not only a bar, but it's also a brewery. A brewery. So this, oh, okay, so they this, brew their own stuff here. Yeah, this one is made for them. From them, okay. It's one of my favorite beers. Okay. Uh, this is uh, barley wine. It's a type of beer that after it's done, it's been uh, aged, in this case, for 24 months in wine, bar in wine barrels. This one is in the Spanish uh, Oloroso barrel. Yeah. And there's very good uh, vino tinto, red wine in Spain as well. So if it's brewed in some of the wines that barrels that I've tasted, I know it's gonna be good. It's, it's kind of cool, like a fusion, like a beer and wine. But also we got these right here. These are called cañas. This is what I've learned since being in Madrid. There's these, uh, like you don't have to get the tall beers or pints. Usually in the US, the minimum size is like double this. So when you get this, you could get uh, a lot of options. Yeah, this, uh, I, I think this is uh, especially uh, because of the tapa culture. Yeah, tapa culture. When you order a beer, you get a small piece of uh, food. So you order small beers to get out of food. Oh, that's a, that's a very good catch. I didn't even think about that, but it's true. I, we've been having small food and small beer, but a lot of it. I love it. <laughs> it yeah. adds up, it adds up. All right, cheers. Cheers. Let's see. Oh my God. Is this wine or beer? <laughs> is this the is this that one? No, this one is a Russian Imperial Stout, mm -hmm. and it's a, this one has been aged in whiskey barrels. Whiskey. Oh, so now I'm getting I'm actually getting an aftertaste from this. Is very interesting. I'm taking another. It's been taste. aged for eight months in whiskey barrels. That's the thing. It has like a barrel taste to it, but when you first drink it, it's like very light, and then there's a big aftertaste. Yeah. Kind of like a coffeeish 
licorice taste. Yeah, with like a, like, there is a hint of whiskey. It's like confusing. It's like a bunch of flavors. Yeah, okay. this brewery is, is made of really crazy people. They get some weird, uh, some any kind of Spanish barrel and they put their beer in, in those barrels, so yeah. they don't care. Yeah, it has like a bunch of different tastes to it. Yeah. It's, it's really confusing. The aftertaste, definitely you get like a whiskey-ish IPA aftertaste at the end. If you guys really like IPAs, what do you think? Oh, you like that? It's a bomb. Oh yeah, it's like a flavor bomb. It's a flavor bomb. <laughs> I love it. This is my favorite beer. This is yeah. my favorite type of beer. I'm honestly not a big fan of IPA, but I actually like that this has like a whiskey aftertaste because I like whiskey. It tastes like whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And this one is uh, something something wild. Uh, it's made in salty water. Salt water? Yeah. Okay, let's try it out. Oh, okay. Just more has like that craft beer feel. Ooh, I like this because like a little bit sweet, lemony. Yeah, but yeah. it's also salty because it's in salt water. Yeah, it has an interesting taste. A little bit salty, but I get like a lemony, like almost like honey hint. Almost like a honey tea beer. <laughs> kind of weird, but uh, that's why I'm learning that some of these craft beers have a lot of interesting flavors. If you, if you like honey, uh, we're gonna have honey beer later. Oh, okay. All right, we got another special guest trying some craft beers with us. Two's a party, three's a crowd. My name is Vic, I'm a nurse and my voice a bit cracking. <laughs> I got this uh, hazy IPA. And I mainly chose it because um, the, the hop has my name on it. it has it's it's called Big Secret. Ooh, nice. <laughs> All right, guys. This is why I wanted to do this uh, Madrid craft yeah. beer tour because there's like definitely a culture here. Because Alex here was telling me that like. Um, they recycle the beer and flavors. It's kind of like very limited. So when you come back, they might not have this flavor. So it's very experimental and it's very creative. So that's like the word to describe the craft beer scene here in Madrid. Very creative. There's like a bunch of stuff going on, which is, I could taste that in here. But the most important thing is the brewery. So uh, people have like favorite breweries and then they'll always come out with great flavor. So what brewery is this one from? Uh, this one is La Quince, La Quince. which uh, in English it means the 15th. Uh -huh. Uh, and this one is 4.5 uh, percent. percent. All right, and this one's 12 percent. And then what company is this one? La Calavera. La Calavera. The the school. In the English. school. I'm not a huge IPA fan, but I know a lot of friends that would really like this one because it's really creative. Like I said, this is from Bassland, one of the most popular craft beer breweries. Let's try it out. Ooh. This one's interesting. It's a bit sour. I think this one's my favorite out of all of them. Not too sour, a little bit sweet, light, but also has like that IPA. It's IPA, right? Yeah, it's an IPA. Yeah, I don't like IPA because it's too deep and dark, but I actually like this one because it's like lighter, sweeter, airier. So maybe you don't like a Spanish IPA. Yeah, maybe I like Spanish. <laughs> I'm be honest, I tried another Spanish IPA and it was also lighter. I like that too, so that's me. I know a lot of people like their IPA is really dark. Vic is jumping with joy behind the scene right now because, like I said, this is also a pizza bar. And she got a huge piece right there. You can try some, <laughs> but it's mine. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take this to Pound Town. Cheers, everyone. Salud. Cheers. <laughs> All right, on to try more Spanish beer. All right, Vic was so gracious to invite me to slice her smoked salmon pizza. I wasn't gonna try some, but Smoked salmon piece is pretty rare back home, but apparently it's a thing here in Spain. España, let's try it out. Mm. The smoked salmon melts with the pizza. Very soft, and avocado too. Like the texture, it just melts, but you do get like that, some of that fishy taste from the salmon, but thin crust pizza, salmon. It's almost like a thin flatbread with salmon. I mean, that's basically what it is, but when you're drinking beer, Pizza is always a, a good move. Okay, for the second round, I got some crazy shit. So this is a sour ale, and it's a piña colada flavor wow. with coconut and lime. And this one, I opened. That's a crazy one, right? Uh, yeah, and that's the Oloroso Barrel Ace, the barley wine. So it's open, so we should try it. It's a collaboration between La Quince and La Guineo. You can see, you're gonna see that it doesn't have barely any espuma. It doesn't have. Look, I can't even do this, and oh. it's not gonna make anything. It's, it's like liquor, it's like wine, so no foam. All right, uh, I'm gonna try this one. Oh yeah, 
It's um, very tarty, lemony. I do taste a little bit of that coconut, but it's more like a, a sour than anything. Yeah. It's not super sweet. I'll call this one like a sour, but I appreciate that coconut taste. Yeah, it's, it's hard to believe that this is 6% though. Yeah. Because it's actually light and pretty good. So it'll mess you up. Good thing we got these in a cañas. Yeah, and, and it's called a sour, sour ale because of that. Sour ale. I, I really like these cañas. You can really taste a, a lot of the stuff with the cañas. So this is the black barley. Well, yeah, this is also a very confusing one. <laughs> this one, okay, so the other one was like IPA, kind of tastes like wine. This legitimately, I can taste the wine. So it doesn't, it's not in a whiskey barrel, it's a wine barrel. It honestly tastes more like wine than beer. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, it's been literally 24 months in 24 a wine 24 months in a wine barrel. It tastes like a wine IPA, that's what it tastes like. The smell is, it, it, it smells like Oloroso. Oloroso? I much rather drink this for 6%, but this is 14%, guys. So for a 14% alcoholic beverage, is actually not too bad. He really likes his IPA, so. I think this one is, uh, it, it used to be my favorite beer back then. They made uh, new ones, mm -hmm. and this is the third batch. The first batch was my favorite beer. Huh. This is not as good, but it's quite good. It's probably my top five, top 10 favorite beers. Yeah, so like I said, craft beer scene in Madrid is crazy. Keyword. Creativity and experimental, for sure. This place is pretty cool too because uh, it kind of has the feel of like a Madrid, you know, Taparia, Cerveceria. Like these places are very small, cozy, kind of like hole in the wall feel, but it has like that American or California craft beer brewery type of feel as well. So, there, and there's a couple of these around town I've been passing by and seeing, but yeah. So, I think the cerveceria and the uh, brewery scene is popping up here for sure, right? Yeah, for sure. In cities and in the north, like almost in every place you go for Madrid, you have your local brewery store now. Yeah. So uh, there are lot of, lot of, lots of breweries uh, from all around Spain. Yeah, so glad to be a part of it. This makes me feel like um, prouder than I should be because these cañas are so small, so. Chugging them is a, a little bit easier, but uh, yeah. I'm still proud nonetheless. If, if, if you think this is easy, you should drink this one. It, it was 40 degrees. Yeah. 14 degrees. So. Not all canyas are made equally. <laughs> Vic here has a story about chugging. This is actually kind of funny. Let her tell you. So uh, there's a bit of a Spanish and history lesson, two in one. Uh, chugging in Spanish, you would easily say Hidalgo. And when someone tells you, hazte un Hidalgo, means Let's get to chugging, and you basically have to drink the whole thing. Um, that what most people don't know is that um, Hidalgo was was yeah a historical figure of a wealthy man that was born into a wealthy family. Basically, they didn't have to work or anything; they were really just wealthy. Um, so you would say, oh, because you're generous with the drink, right? Well, it actually comes from this man called Miguel Hidalgo, and uh, there's an expression that if you say Hidalgo, you have to say a phrase uh, that the rough translation would be, um, if you leave any drop behind, I'll f your mom. <laughs> it's a rhyme. So Hidalgo, es vieja algo. Caña, it's usually theorized uh, that it comes straight from the tube that it's connected to the barrel. You're glass is connected to the barrel like it's really fresh and you don't have much time to drink it because like right out of the barrel and it's fresh i don't know this is a theory no one actually knows if it comes from that i like to think that it's like you're drinking straight from the barrel and you drink fast <laughs> yeah. yeah and that's like the tapas too i've been hearing this every time i've been going to a place like eat your tapas right when they bring it out and like drink your beer right when the, you bring it out because that's when it'll taste the best so basically if i want to tell someone to chug and peer pressure them in spain i had to say a hidalgo Hidalgo. All right, Hidalgo, Hidalgo, guys. <laughs> so we're gonna drink a lot of beers. You want to get some snacks as well? Um, Alex ordered us some hummus. Let's try it out. <laughs> Love eating finger foods with beer. Usually back home, it'll be like wings, fries, pizza, but they got hummus here because, you know, Mediterranean Middle Eastern food is a big staple here in Europe. <coughs> All right, we got Lipa, named after Dua Lipa right here. No, just kidding. <laughs> It's uh, from Quince, so same brewery as this. Let's try it out. It's West Coast Lager. It's 6.4 IPA. A little bit light sweet, but um, this has more of like that IPA flavor. Pretty good. I would say these beers are deceiving because it's 6.4, but honestly it doesn't taste like 6.4. Pretty good. This one tastes like more of like that traditional IPA because it's like West Coast IPA. But yeah, I guess they got the traditional stuff too as well as the interesting stuff.
they're so friendly here in Madrid and specifically at this bar. So we got all this at a little like liquor store. A lot of the Madrid cat craft, Madrid and Spanish craft beers right here. And they let us try it here along with uh, their other beers. So um, let's see what we have here. So this one is an a Deepa. Deepa. IPA. It's IPA. Double IPA. Double IPA, 8%. This is the weird one Good that you're talking about. That. Good luck reading that. A blend of 75% size on age and cognac burial. So 20 months with 25% sour aged in Oloroso barrels. Yeah. This one is the Oso. That's an IPA too. IPA, cashmere, citra, sabro. Alex said this is one his favorite. He says very creamy. 6.2 alcohol. Guys, these are all above 6%, so Up it's gonna there. get dangerous. Pilsner, tattoo. This one is uh, how Pilsner. much? Oh, okay, this one's under 6%, 5.8. Oh, this okay. one is meat, it's for like biking, biking drinks. Okay, so this is a mead. Mead uh, is what uh, we would call like a biking drink. It's uh, made with honey uh, to ferment the, 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 the beer, you could, you could tell it to make. Look, right. this one, for example, it only has water, honey, and yeast. That's yeast, it. honey, water, and yeast, okay. Yeah, you have to add something to ferment those, so those sugars of the honey. Yeah, what did so, you order? What are these? <laughs> this one is a hazy uh, APA from the Dogals. It has a uh, five uh, and two percent. Oh, and then this one is a uh, Lakinse from here. It's also here. from Lakinse and it's Madrid. an APA. Cheers. Cheers. You know what, I actually like the APAs. This is definitely a hazy. It's lighter than the APAs I've had back home, but yeah, a little bit fruity. Not bad, I actually like the Lequince IPAs and drinks. They're like regular IPAs, but a bit lighter, which I prefer. The, this one is a hot fiction. This one is less sweet, but more balanced. I think I like this one more. Yeah, these ones taste like more traditional IPAs. Not too much twist on these ones. So yeah, they're doing the craft brew scene here correctly. It's just on the lighter side, which I actually prefer. <laughs> we got Christian, he's uh, the bartender here. He's actually gonna share some of these drinks with us. Hola, buenas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, salud. All right, my first time trying uh, Vikings mead, I guess. Salud, everyone. Salud. Cheers. Doesn't touch mu taste much like beer. I definitely taste the fermentation. It's kind of like kombucha. But that yeah. fermentation, I don't taste much honey too. Oh, okay, there it is. It's a, it's a it's very, like very long aftertaste. This one is pretty dry. So there are uh, some of them, uh, they have a, a lot of honey. Mm -hmm. So they're so sweet. And other ones, they are more dry. So they are not as sweet. It depends on people, people's liking. So my first time trying mead, it's pretty good. I give it like an 8.2 out of 10 DW score because it's not too harsh. This one. All right, I guess I'm gonna have to do a Hidalgo with this one. <laughs> All right, on to our next one. So this is Alex's favorite. It looks so good. The hazy. Because I really love this brewery. It's one of my favorites. Right. My favorite IPA are from this brewery. It's from Madrid. All right, let's do it. It's called the uh, Oso Brewery. Also. Bear. Oso Brewery. And it's probably called Bear because of the bear in uh, Seoul. Yeah. Uh, the mascot of uh, Madrid. The mascot of Madrid is the okay, bear. So this is. Again, a lot of foam. So, um, this one is called the milk, la leche. La, la leche. leche. And it translates to the milk. <laughs> But um, it also refers to something being really good. When some, when in Spain you say it is la leche, it means you're the best. You're the hell out. Awesome. Yeah, we're la leche for sure. We're la leche. Leche. So this one's the milk, milky IPA from Oso, another uh, brewery company here in Spain. Six point two. All right. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Salud. It already smells. Salud, Christian. Definitely a creamy finish. Wow. Yeah, definitely amazing. I really like this IPA. Everything this brewery does is so good. Yeah, I think I'm a fan of Madrid's IPA. Um, I think a lot of people wouldn't be fans because they like their IPAs like dark and strong, but these IPAs are on the light side, almost like a mix between like a like you an ale and an IPA. You can see that even Christian is impressed with this. Yeah, right? 
Yeah, there's a natural like sweetness, fruitiness to it. And I, I've been to like the north of Spain and it's all around Spain. It's very fertile farmland and like all of the, a lot of the ingredients in the food are fresh. And I guess they use the same ingredients in this because I get like a natural sweetness from this. Pretty good. For an IPA, 8.4 out of 10. 8.2 out of 10 for me because I'm not an IPA fan, but pretty good. I actually like it. I don't think it's bitter at all. It's really creamy, like it's milky in a way, and I like it. Oh my god, this already smells so much. Uh, I, I, cannot, I cannot capture a single flavor because... It reminds me of Sidra. Yeah, I'm really excited to try this one. This is the crazy one that uh, Alex said that uh, we should definitely get with, you know, all the barrels, so let's try it out. It reminds me. Oh yeah. Oh man, it's a sour. This one hits you in the face, yeah. super sour. It's more of like a cider than a beer. It's like a cider. It reminds me also of, of like uh, red berries. Uh -huh. Like um, also like in mead, sometimes they have also these flavors because of the fermentation. Yeah. This is your look, your typical mixed fermentation beer. I've tried uh, several, several uh, beers of this type of mixed fermentation and they have a really delicate flavor. So I'll give this one um, 8.5 out of 10 just because I am a fan of mm -hmm. ciders and sours but I know a lot of people don't like sours so it is what it is but yeah we really like this one. The first time I smelled it it reminded me of um, like first time when you smell vinegar and you have that hit but it did not hit me up of a bad smell it was just the oh. reaction. Oh that's funny because uh, uh, jokingly, we, we call these beers vinegars. Oh, well, honestly, that's the word. That's the word I was looking for. I was like, what does this remind me of? It's like really sour, but yeah, we, it's like vinegar. <laughs> yeah. we, say, we, we say, oh, uh, do you want that vinegar? So yeah. it's like this beer, we, we don't call it vinegar. Alcoholic vinegar for you. So this is the tattoo, Spanish Pilsner. Let's try this out. I'll do the honors for this one. All right. Well, really clear. Pour up. Yes. Alright, <laughs> salud. 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 Salud, Christian. Mm. Oh, yeah. I love Pilsner. I like, that's the thing. I, I don't know if it's like a European thing where like the IPAs are a bit lighter, but I like European beers a lot because they're on like the lighter side. Oh, yeah. So, uh, interesting thing about this beer, they actually, uh, some of the owners signed their names where? up there on the wall. All right, so this is actually a thing I've already noticed before Alex told me, but like the beer scene, the craft brew scene here is very close knit and Alex was telling me something. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to say that uh, um, every brewery is uh, friends with other breweries and the same goes with bars and restaurants. They are friends with each other and they, are, they all belong to this tiny world of the craft beer uh, scene. And yeah, they are all just friendly and it, that's, that's why in this case, uh, they let us try all these different types of beer. The, the store closed and we can still be here yeah. because... It's all love in the craft brew community in Madrid. It's quickly growing, guys. We gotta hop on a train. I'm hopping on it because, like I said... Oh, no pun intended. Hop. Because I really like the, the IPAs here. Pilsner hold, Pilsner's holds a special place in my heart. I like, like the light, weedy flavor of it. So, just because it's a Pilsner, give it like a... 8.6 out of 10, because I really like Pilsner, but like I said, all these like Spanish beers are on the lighter side, yeah. which I really, I appreciate, I, I like I like lighter beers. This is funny because if you go to the north of Spain uh -huh. and you try their beers, they're, gonna, they're not gonna be light. Yeah. They're gonna be dense and thick yeah. and strong. Yeah. All right guys, last but not least, we're ending it bittersweet. Our last cup right here from Soma. Salud. 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 Oh yeah. This one's so good. Oh man, this is, oh man. I think this is like probably one of my favorite IPAs of the night. But this is like perfectly fruity, sweet. There's a little bit of that deep taste from the IPA, but. Ooh, perfect amount of sweetness and like fruits. The hops in this is like, makes it really sweet. So this is the sweetest IPA we've had all night. And I would give this one, I think it's like, probably one of my favorite IPAs. I think I give this one like a 9.4 out of 10. It's really good. I'm glad. Salud. We, we ended it with a bang. What do you guys think? I really like the hops are really fruity, really soft on the mouth. Maybe it leaves that um, hazy aftertaste, uh, like that bitter, but it's not bitter at all. Like it's really pleasant. 
Yeah, guys, all the uh, street art laying around this um, cerveceria or craft bar brewery, very reminiscent of home in the Pacific West Coast. But like I said, it is still Spain. So if you guys have been anywhere in Spain, you guys would like these little cozy, I would even say romantic little dungeons of you know, underground caves where they have more tables and places where you guys could drink more. I really like this about the cervecerias here. Even in restaurants, there's always like a little basement that looks, resembles a cave. And yeah, so they definitely have this down here too. So it's not just the upstairs area. But yeah, these are all their um, barrels right here that they brew their own beers in. So really dope place. This is not the only craft brew bar in Madrid. I've actually got recommended a couple places, so I really think the craft brew scene is growing here in Madrid. Like I said, very creative. So if you guys are in Spain, it's not all about the wine. Wine is like one of the most popular alcoholic beverages here, but definitely check out the craft brew scene as well if you guys are into that. Beatriz, all right, Beatriz here is gonna take a, a, a drink with us. Um, another pleasant surprise, we thought we were done, but uh, Christian here gave us the number four, Bitter Wolf. La Quince, so this brewery, and uh, this was one of the weaker ones, 4.2%, but the style is a bitter. La primera vez, los pelos se me ponían de punta. Yeah. Goosebumps. 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 <laughs> For me, oddly, it's not as sour as all the other ones, but I think the first word that comes to mind is sour. For like me, sour. It's, kind of, it's kind of fruity. It's like yeah. um, like sour fruit, like like candy. I actually really like this one though, but maybe that's because it's 4.2, so it's I not as strong. So it's tastier. All right, this has to be the last one. Has to be. <laughs> All right, update on that bitter wolf. It's the aftertaste. Like after I let it sit for a little bit, I finished that caña. Maybe it's, it's a different style because back home I'm used to getting like a pint, but here we're doing the cañas, the little ones. After a while, it got a little bit bitter, but like I said, as categorized as a bitter, it's not as bitter as like the beers back home. So like, I'll say the theme for the Madrid beer is like, it's just a little bit more mild and lighter. Like I said, really like that. So he gave us... Uh, Number seven? A souvenir. Lipa, the do Lipa, I like the, the Lipa. The West Coast Ipa. And this is uh, God Save the Session Ipa. And like I said guys, these Madrid breweries are always creating, so these ones might not be in season when you get here, so... It's all, it's just all about the brewery. All right, so that's the thing about drinking in Europe and also in Spain. You don't have to drive back, so you can actually go all out a little bit because we're just getting on a train or a bus, whatever yeah. your mode of transportation is, and uh, walk off a little bit of alcohol and get home safe, so. And you get nice views too at night, look at this. Yeah, guys, great hospitality here from Christian and the Brew Wild Pizza Bar team here in Madrid. You guys are in the area, you gotta check this place out. They also have the La Quince Brewery here as well. Great brews here. So yeah, guys, had a great time trying the craft brew scene here in Madrid, Spain. Got to try a lot of the beer here, so. All right, deuces. If you guys like this video, please like it. Comment down below some recommendations for us in Madrid or elsewhere, and subscribe for more DVW food and travel vlogs. Deuces. Mm -hmm.